just wanted to, to welcome everyone to our financial aid virtual information session tonight. Um, I am Sue Willard. I'm one of the uh, associate directors of admissions at HWS, um, and I'm joined by Beth Nepa, who is our director of financial aid. So um, I'm happy to answer some questions more about the merit aid side of it. Um, but Beth is here, obviously, to answer the financial aid nuts and bolts, um, which, you know, a lot of times people say it's easier to be admitted into a school than be able to afford it. So Beth is here to help all of you uh, figure out how you can best hopefully possibly afford it, uh, Hobart William Smith Education. So Beth, without further ado, why don't you kick it off and uh, we can get things started. Sounds great. Well, first and foremost, congratulations on your acceptance to HWS. Pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, kudos. Thank you. Um, Sue is going to post a portal for you and you may have already seen it, but I just want you to be aware of it because if you, after tonight, if you have like uh, questions regarding your aid package um, or your special circumstances that you want to talk to us about, then you really want to log on to and uh, make an appointment with our one-on-one -on -one calls that we have with our, our financial aid counselors that we have going on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays um, until the end of, or the, wow, tomorrow's April 1st. I can't believe it. So we have them going on for another two weeks. So do look at that portal um, if I'm not able to answer your questions this evening. So again, my name is Beth Nepa. I am the Director of Financial Aid. I have been with the colleges uh, for the past 16 years. Um, not only am I, um, you know, in, in this wonderful role, but I also have uh, my daughter just graduated in 2020. So I'm a parent um, of, um, of a student who experienced HWS so much differently than I could ever have ever imagined. Um, she was able to travel. She went to spend a summer in um, Africa. She, um, our program, we have so many programs. She went to uh, Vietnam where she was able to go to Thailand and Singapore. And again, just uh, again, our programs. And I mentioned that because we, our students are able to take their financial aid and travel through our programs um, you know, with that aid to make it affordable for our, our students to really be global citizens, which is really, really quite awesome. So did wanna mention, um, I want you to look at your financial aid packages and, and kind of talk about the differences between the different resources that you've been offered. So as Sue just talked about briefly, the, the merit portion, that merit portion has everything to do with something um, that you did in your high school years, right? So it's um, an accolade to that. And you will keep that for four years, um, regardless of your financial need or your financial aid form results, that is yours, as long as you maintain that satisfactory academic progress, which is a 2.0. The need-based portions, that's based on the financial aid forms that you completed. So from here on out, you will not do a CSS profile again. It will only be the FAFSA form. So it will be based on the FAFSA results each year. So if your financial situation changes a lot, and it has to be quite significant, um, we might have to reevaluate that. But again, we're, we're really, um, straightforward with our families. We're, we're partners. We want you to be able to look at your aid package right now and be able to kind of budget out for four years. So something really has to change significantly again for us to reduce that need-based portion of your financial aid package. There is that self-help portion of your aid package and that self-help is student loans and work study. So Self-help meaning you have to do something to receive that, that money. So student loans, you have to pay them back. Work study, it's up to you um, if you wanna work. If you do wanna work, then you get a paycheck every two weeks based on the hours that you put in the two weeks prior. You can either use that for spending money on the weekends 
or you can turn it around and pay against your bill that you have. So it's really up to you and your family on, on how you wanna work out that work study portion. There are a lot of families that for the first year, um, they decide, you know what, we really don't, let's leave the work study there, but we may not opt to work, have the student work because we, they want you to get acclimated into the college life and really focus on your academics. So again, it's an option. It, it'll be there for you if you decide at any point that you wanna work. We also have two really great um, things that we have in place for our families in terms of how families are gonna pay for their family contribution. We have an interest-free payment plan. It's up to 12 months. So like a car payment or any kind of installment payment, if you decide that, hey, we can pay $300 a month, you sign up for this payment plan, we will deduct that out of your, whatever account you say each month. And on top of that, the federal government has an amazing fixed interest rate uh, loan for parents. It's called the federal plus loan. Again, it's not a variable interest, so it's, it's fixed. It's gonna stay the same. And, and mom and dads, if you're on the line, you can postpone your payments while your child is in school. So between those two resources, that's what the majority of our families do to make up their family contributions. Our cost will increase each year. Um, I would say, and Sue, correct me uh, um, if I'm wrong, but I would say for the past several years, it's been between three and three and a half percent um, for, the, for the increase. Our grants will not increase um, for you to cover that, but the loan component does increase each year. So right now for first year students, if you are an aid applicant, you would see that your loan right now is $5,500. For sophomores, it's $6,500. And then for juniors and seniors, it's $7,500. A total of $27,000 when you leave the colleges. Very, very affordable. So just, I always wanna put that out there. Um, if you have special circumstances any given year, we need to know about those because we have the ability to go back into your FAFSA form and change the data to reflect what those circumstances are if we deem it necessary or enough to make a difference in, that, in your expected family contribution. So always be forthcoming with anything that we might need to know about what's going on in your household at any given point. That's so important. One thing that I really value about HWS coming from another school that did things so differently is that any outside award that you bring with you any outside scholarship, whether it's $500 from the Elks Club or uh, from your church, $1,000 or $250 from your high school. Every dollar that you bring with you, we are going to put that against your family contribution. We are not going to take any money away from the money that we've already offered you, unlike many other schools. Um, they'll take dollar for dollar or they'll, they'll take half of what you're bringing in against what they've offered you. We don't, we don't take anything away from you. So go after those outside awards. They're there. Um, students, you should know in your local community, you don't, your parents don't have to be, or your family members don't have to be affiliated with Knights of Columbus, the American Legion, the Lions Club. All of those organizations, they have money to give to students. And again, 
you have to seek seek that money out and you're and there you don't have to have an affiliation with that organization to apply apply again um, every dollar counts right there's another one that i highly recommend and if you could write this down it's called dollars for scholars and it's through scholarship america We're actually a matching partner, which means that if we have not already met your financial need based on the, the financial aid forms that you've completed and say they give you $500, we're gonna give you $500 on top of it. Say they give you $1,500 and you still have unmet need, we're gonna give you out of our money, a matching fund of $1,500. So do look that up. That's a great one. And, the, and, and I mention it uh, anytime I'm talking with families and it's been many, many years now. And so we have so many recipients of that award because we just make it known to our families that we're a matching partner. I just wanna reiterate, um, one more thing, and that's the special circumstances. We don't, we don't know what you're not telling us, right? So the FAFSA form does not allow you to tell us, hey, listen, you know, things have changed drastically in my household. Someone's no longer working or someone is ill or there's a divorce situation or something, anything in those, in that realm. We need to know that so that we can look at your whole financial picture and see if there's anything that we can do more to assist you. So make sure that you tell us, let us know. You can do that because we also have an appeals process. That appeals process, if you go online to our website, hws.edu and you just search in our search engine, the Loan and Resource Center, it's one of the first forms that you'll see. It's the appeal form. Once you actually complete that form and hit submit, we receive it immediately. Again, we need to know um, what's going on. You know, we don't, we, we, we we only know what we see in front of us right now. So please don't, don't be shy. This is the time for you to let us know if there's anything going on that we already don't know about. Sue, what am I missing? I don't think you've missed too much. Just in case anybody hasn't checked the chat, I did put in a link to the financial aid portal for the admitted students of this year. Um, I've also put in a link to the Dollars for Scholars program that Beth um, I was mentioning. Um, and then the last link that I put in there is for the, the financial aid appeal form. Um, I think that, you know, one of the things we really look for with our students, um, you know, with the appeal form, you know, Beth was saying, alluding to different circumstances, obviously with COVID, um, there are a lot of families that were affected in different ways by that. So it's very important to, to go in depth. Um, you know, if, if you have another school that, you know, has offered you uh, a greater financial um, amount in their, in their award letter, you know, that's something that, that, that Beth and, and our vice president want to see. So, you know, we want to try within the capability that we have to try to make this affordable um, to all of you. Um, definitely, you know, schedule one of those one-on-one -on -one meetings if you do have questions about it. But, um, you know, we'd love to hear from all of you. If you don't feel comfortable, you know, unmuting yourself and asking the question, if you have questions, you know, please put those in the chat. Um, I will say when we were talking about work study, a lot of people have questions about that. Um, you know, there are a lot of, of student jobs on campus. It was a little bit more limited this year just because of COVID and social distancing and all that stuff. But, you know, it's not a glamorous job. The best paying, most, the highest paying job on campus is with dining services. Um, so you get that. Um, every, the students love it because you get the catered meals too. So um, they claim that's the best food on campus. 
Um, but there's everything from working in the library to working in missions to, you know, swiping cards at the field house, that type of thing. So there's, there's plenty of jobs. Um, one question that just did come in is, you know, uh, what's the hourly, hourly rate for work study? Um, it's minimum wage. And I believe minimum wage in New York state is, is 1250 an hour. So, um, and the unless great thing about- Unless the food service, the food service, they pay- They pay a little bit more in food service, yeah. but I, I believe it might have, I think New York State um, minimum wage just increased. It was $12.50, um, I believe, um, but that's what the minimum wage is. So it's whatever minimum wage in New York State is, that's what the vast majority of our jobs are. Some students do get jobs in the local community as well. Um, kids have worked at wineries, students have worked at wineries. Um, Monaco's the local coffee shop, um, that type of thing. So students have had jobs. Babysitting is a big thing. Babysitting for, um, you know, faculty and staff and community members is always a big thing as well. So, um, but what other types of questions might some of you have um, for us about anything? And, and I would encourage you to appeal if, if you know, you, you want to attend here and you're not sure if it were affordable yet, or you still have questions about what are these different aspects of my financial aid award, please reach out to us about it. But when you appeal, um, you know, we ask for, it's a very simple form as if some of you, um, you know, might've clicked that, uh, you know, your ID number you can find in the top of your decision letter uh, to HWS. So if you're looking for that. Um, but another uh, question came in and it is, what's the cost for meal plans and housing? Um, Beth, do you want to, to talk about that a little bit? Well, you know, we're so fortunate that we have so many, uh, well, so many different housing options. First year students, you're really, it's going to be the maximum meal plan and the maximum housing, right? So that's, it's about 15,000 to be exact, like for this year, 15,000, like $295, I think is what it is for room and board for first year students. But after that, we have so many different communities on our campus and different housing um, offerings. And then you can drop down because if you have a kitchen in your in the place that you're living, or if you're in a co-op, or if you're you can drop down your meal plan to what meets your you know living experience. But again, we gosh, Sue, how many? Yeah, we have so many different houses, you know, community homes that we have and places where our students live that, again, have full kitchen services. So it, it varies. It does. It varies from year to year. I will say with, with housing and um, meal plans. So as Beth was saying, you guys do get a choice um, with what meal plan that you want. Um, a lot of students do choose to go with the top meal plan. You even get a, a birthday cake during your birthday month. Um, so that's always a nice thing if you can't go home. Um, that is if you like cake. So, and I have a sweet tooth that could kill somebody. So, um, but you know, the meal plan, usually they choose that because it gives you the most flexibility. You usually you get swipes and then you get declining balance. So declining balance means you can use it as our, at our cafe. You can use it at Oban Pan. So it's more of um, going to the a la carte places versus like what you think of as the traditional dining hall. Um, we do have, you know, dining plans that maybe uh, your sophomore, junior, senior year, if you, especially if you have dietary restrictions, you're like, mm, dining hall is not doing it for me. You know, say you have have a gluten allergy or, or um, you know, you have, you, you're you vegan, vegetarian, we do have options like that, but we all know um, sometimes it's, it's, we feel more comfortable and better just cooking our own food and, and doing that. So if you do that, um, the cost for, for dining is significantly reduced if you, if you choose a meal plan like that. Um, with housing, um, if you want to be a resident advisor and you go through that process and you're hired to be a resident advisor, um, which is a very competitive process, but if you're hired to be one of those, your housing costs are actually negated. So you're not charged for housing. It's part of your compensation. Um, so that's one way to, that students have used to help afford their education here at HWS is becoming an RA. So um, we are a residential campus. So you're gonna be living on campus with the vast majority of you for four years. Um, so, but as Beth said, what is it? $15,295 she said for this year, yeah. um, <laughs> and 52 cents. Um, so, but that's, that's kind of what we are. But after your first year, 
um, that's when you, you're going to have flexibility depending on the type of, right. of living arrangement you've chosen to, to use. And that RA, I mean, because of all the different houses that we have, um, theme, theme houses and living arrangements, we have, uh, I want to say, at least 58 RAs. That's a lot. It's not just a handful of kids that are getting this benefit, right? So it really, and then because we are such a, um, a huge proponent of our kids going abroad, you have a lot of kids that are RAs, but then they go abroad. So that opens up a lot more, you know, slots for other students to get into that, um, that, that the thought of being an RA, which is great for your resume and great for your pocketbook. And another thing is, is, you know, a lot of people sometimes have concerns about, oh, I want to go to graduate school. Like I want to go to med school or I want to go to law school, something like that. So it's affording things through, through, you know, looking further, you know, four years down the road or five years down the road. And, and that's something that we can obviously, uh, we have empathy towards, but it's, it's one of those things where we have to look at, you know, what your financial situation is now and approach that in four years. We, we can't plan our finances based on what you potentially could be doing. Um, after graduation. Um, so, but it, at the same time, you know, families' financial situations could change during your four years here. Obviously, a lot of families had a lot of unexpected things happen um, this past year with COVID, losing jobs, losing income, you know, whatever it may be. And I think we do a very good job of treating each student individually financially and listening to your concerns, listening to the challenges that your family has um, and trying to make adjustments where adjustments are, are needed and necessary um, and doable. So um, that does you know, happen throughout your four years. If something changes, we're more than happy to do that. Um, Beth, do you wanna to touch on if you have uh, siblings that are gonna be entering or exiting college during the four years? I think sometimes yeah, um, yeah. people are, are wondering about how that affects their aid package. Absolutely, so when you're doing your financial aid forms, the number of household members you have and number of um, siblings in school has a huge effect on a family contribution. So if you're coming in right now and there's two, of, two household members in college, um, and then all of a sudden one graduates and moves on, that does inflate your expected family contribution. We don't take a huge chunk away. Um, the, again, it goes back to me saying that we really want you to be able to plan ahead for four years. Will we take some away? Maybe, possibly, but it all depends on your finances that within that year, you know, the year prior as well. Um, same as if all of a sudden you have one join you in, in college. Now there's two in school. Most of the time we are giving you additional gift aid. Um, in the range, the average is about uh, three to $3,500 more in your gift aid that we're giving you because there's just that one additional person in school. So we literally hand package our students. So we don't put you through um, like a computer regimen and all of a sudden it's spitting out data. We are hand packaging you all the way through your four years, which we really pride ourselves on. We really come to know you and your families and we really pride ourselves on that partnership. So it's an open door policy, right? It's, it's just, that's what we have here. Um, and, and it works for us, it works for our families and our students. And so it's just keeping that line of communication open and um, that's what we do best. So if there are any more questions, please put them in the chat or unmute. Um, I will say, just giving a minute if, if any of you want to do that. Um, we are open for visitors. Uh, we would love to have you here on campus. Um, if you feel comfortable uh, about making the trip to Geneva, um, fortunately we do have a very low infection rate right now. Um, on campus, um, we have, I don't even think we have, I think yesterday when I looked, maybe four cases of, of COVID on campus. And it's, you know, less than I think half a percentage, um, you know, positivity rate. So we're doing really well in the region, which um, we're, we're really thankful for. But we are more than happy to have you here. We do socially distance tours where there's one um, maximum of two families on a tour, mask wearing, you're going to be going into buildings. Um, you know, I think we're actually going to be doing some admitted student days on Fridays coming up. We do have a virtual open house 
on the 17th of uh, uh, September of April. <laughs> I know all of you are sick of Zoom. So we would love, I was in the office today and I love seeing people in person. I met a family from California I've been working with for nine months and we finally got to see each other in person. It was like, I wish I could hug you right now. Um, but you know, it's one of those things where we would love to have you here for a visit. Um, you know, if there's anything that you need to help make your decision, please contact financial aid, contact us in admissions, even if I'm not the person who works directly with your area, since you're on this with me tonight, and if you don't know your counselor for your area, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I've been kicking around our office for a little while, so I'm happy to, to help any of you out, whether it's helping to coordinate a visit or answer questions or concerns about academics activities. Um, I'm older, so I'm also happy to put you in touch with students um, since I am not living back in the dorms again. But, um, you know, we're happy, happy to help you out. And as Beth said in the beginning, most importantly, congratulations on your admittance. Congratulations on, you know, I'm sure a lot of great news you're getting from from schools. You guys have been through the ringer um, the last year and a half, and, and you're going to come out better for it. And, you know, congratulations on all your success. And we hope we see all of you um, come August for orientation. Um, but thanks so much for taking the time with us tonight. Beth, do you have anything else you, you'd like to say or? No, not at all. Again, if you have a question regarding your own personal package, please do um, set up an appointment so that you can actually be on, um, on a phone conversation with um, one of our counselors in financial aid. But thank you, everybody. Stay well and enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>